Well, good evening. This is Chair Bob Jorgensen. I'd like to welcome you to the regular meeting of February 23rd, 2022 of the Planning Commission. I call it to order. Deputy City Clerk Kevin Christian, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Dondekar. Here. Commissioner Francis. Here. Commissioner Hopkins. Here. Commissioner Kahn. Here. Commissioner Wilkin. Here. Vice Chair Quincy is absent for tonight's meeting. Chair Jorgensen. Here. Thank you. So let the record reflect that commissioners are pres present through teleconferencing. I'd like to remind my fellow commissioners and staff to help us reduce background noise by muting your phone or microphone unless you are speaking. And that's probably especially true with the Pledge of Allegiance, which comes now and Michael Hopkins will lead us. Thank you, Chair Jorgensen. Uh, I pledge we'll see if we can get the flag real quick here. Oh, oh yeah, get it for too, you too eager. Just a, <laughs> too just eager. a moment. <laughs> it's got to be unfolded. It's in triangles. It takes a little bit. <laughs> I had it here. I promise. Here we go. All right, great, thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, appreciate that. So uh, the first item uh, after the call to order is the public comment for items not on tonight's agenda. Uh, Deputy City Clerk, uh, is there any uh, public comment or anybody with their hand raised to speak? At this point, I don't see a hand raised. Let me just remind the uh, people in attendance that if they uh, wish to speak to the commissioner on items not on the agenda, now is the time to speak. You can go ahead and raise your hand. I will recognize you and promote you to um, a panelist to speak and show your video if you wish. We'll give you just a few more seconds to do so. Again, raise your hand and I will recognize you. Seeing none, Chair, back to you. Thank you. So we'll move on to the consent item, which is the consideration of minutes from the February 9th meeting. Are there any uh, edits uh, from commissioners? Well, then do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion to approve. And I second. Emily seconds. So we have a motion and a second. Um, so uh, Kevin, would you call the roll, please? Commissioner Dondekar? Yes. Commissioner Francis? Yes. Commissioner Hopkins? I think I heard a yes. Commissioner Kahn? Yes. Commissioner Wilkin? Yes. Chair Jorgensen? Yes. Thank you. So now we uh, move to the one and only public hearing tonight. And um, as with all our public hearings, I want to be sure that everyone realizes that any court challenge to the action taken in public hearing items on this agenda may be limited to considering only those issues raised at the public hearing or in written correspondence delivered to the city of San Luis Obispo at or prior to the public hearing. If you wish to speak, please give your name and address for the record and please limit your comments to three minutes. Thank you. So the first item tonight is uh, at 1166 Higuera uh, Street at the corner of Higuera and Toro Streets. Um, and we have Kyle Bell to give the staff report. Yes, hello, me, my camera on. And Chair Jorgensen, in the meantime, um, I will need to recuse myself tonight um, as the applicant is um, on member of the board of my employer. Thank you. 
Thank you. Forgot to call on you. I appreciate that. So we'll see you at the end, I hope. Good. So, uh, Kyle, are you? I, I see the screen. There we go. I got it all figured out now. <laughs> all right. Ready when you are. Go ahead. You can proceed. All right. My name is Kyle Bell. I'm an associate planner of the city of San Luis Obispo. Uh, tonight, we will be reviewing the redevelopment of an existing commercial property to include 12 repurposed shipping containers for an outdoor dining experience. Tonight's recommendation is to find the project consistent. Um, there we go. Uh, consistent with the general plan, community design guidelines, and zoning regulations, and to uh, approve the project subject to the findings and conditions that are outlined in the draft resolution. The project site is located along Higuera Street at the intersection of Higuera and Torres Streets. The project provides direct access from Higuera Street. Um, the project site is located in the commercial retail zone as part of the city's downtown core and is currently vacant. The project site is surrounded by retail and office uses to the north and east and restaurant uses to the west, as well as financial services to the south. Uh, let's see. On January 24th, 2022, the Architecture Review Commission reviewed the project for consistency with the Community Design Guidelines. The ARC recommended that the Planning Commission find the project consistent with the Community Design Guidelines and move the project forward. The proposed project consists of 12 new structures, provides seven tenant suites, three storage rooms, and one bicycle storage locker, uh, and one as well as one for restrooms. Uh, the project also includes repurposing of an existing uh, 1,400 square foot single story structure towards the rear of the lot into a new restaurant suite, providing a total of 4,208 square feet of commercial space and 1,637 square feet of outdoor dining. The project has been um, yeah, the project has been envisioned to be occupied pre predominantly by restaurant uses, and parking requirements have been designed to address the uh, highest parking demand for the site um, at a rate of one space per 100 square feet of restaurant area, resulting in a parking requirement of 40 spaces in accordance with the zoning code. And in accordance with the zoning code, one vehicle space may be reduced for each five additional bicycle spaces provided in excess of required bicycle parking. The applicant is proposing 20 additional bicycle spaces beyond what is required to reduce the vehicle parking uh, by four spaces, which accounts for 10% of the requested parking reduction. A parking demand study has been provided to evaluate the peak parking demand of all intended uses to account for the remaining 50% um, parking reduction requests. The parking demand study adjusted for the standard parking demand to account for the modal shift which is the peak parking demand using a modal split rates adjusted to reflect project's walkability location with 50% of the customers walking or biking to the site. The project provides 16 parking spaces on site, which is two spaces less than identified in the peak parking demand of 18 spaces using the modal shift. Uh, in response to the concern related to parking availability, the applicant has provided a draft management and reduction plan it provides an incentive program to encourage alternative modes of transportation for customers and employers. Uh, sorry, customers and employees. Uh, the plan includes incentives such as information bulletins, um, back and forth right club, um, customer discounts, ride share, and cart pool opportunities, as well as a bike valet. Staff has evaluated the parking demand study and recommends support of the proposed parking reduction with the inclusion of the trip management and reduction plan to address the deficiency of the two parking spaces. And this actually concludes the SAS presentation. I'm available for any questions. So are there questions of Kyle from the commission? I have a few questions, Chair Jorgensen. Sure, please, Mike. Go okay, ahead. Um, thank you. Um, uh, questions for staff. Uh, first of all, I noticed in the very first um, uh, slide that you showed, it, it described the use as a temporary use, but I noticed that there's um, there's nothing in the resolution or the conditions that condition the project to be a temporary use. So um, what's how is what's the uh, lifespan of the, the project envisioned to be? 
Uh, yes, uh, so this project isn't uh, actually designed as a temporary project. We are considering it as a permanent facility. Uh, the applicant's proposal identifies it as a temporary use for the site until a more um, robust project is negotiated for the project sites. Uh, according to our downtown concept plan, this location was envisioned for a parking um, parking garage as well as a transit center. So there's a lot of negotiations that go into that. And right now there's not a whole, there's no concrete direction on how long that might take. And so this project is envisioned to uh, utilize the vacant site until those negotiations and projects are further refined. So it's being considered though, uh, approved as a, as a permanent use, correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, I'm curious um, if there was um, specific discussion at the ARC, at the Architectural Review Commission, about um, compatibility with the neighborhood in, in terms of design, about the, the metal materials, and about articulation. Do you recall if there was a discussion about that and um, in any detail? Uh, yes, that's a, those are all the focuses of what the ARC uh, typically reviews. And so they did provide some guidance about some concerns about some materials, specifically on the parapets. Uh, but ultimately, they, they did not uh, recommend any changes to the project and move the project forward with a recommendation as is to the Planning Commission. Um, okay. Other than that, there was uh, discussions. The discussions did also did include consideration of the neighborhood character, um, but the downtown is, is an eclectic design, and so the, the materials were not identified as uh, incompatible with the neighborhood. Okay. And um, finally, um, there, I, I did see a sign program proposed by the applicant, uh, but I didn't see the sign program uh, incorporated into the resolution or the conditions. I saw a condition about uh, th that the signs need to comply with the sign regulations, but I didn't see anything about the, the actual sign program being required. Is, um, is, did I miss that or, uh, or is it not part of the approval? Uh, well, there's no required findings for the sign program. Um, as for the conditions, it, uh, that the signs comply with what is presented in the package of the development review, then those will be able to carry forward. If there's any changes to the, um, the sign program, then it would be, need to be re-reviewed or through a modification process. Uh, so there's um, the specific uh, conditions were identified as necessary for the project. But if there's some suggestions that you, the commission has, I'd be happy to hear them. So I just want to understand. So are you saying that um, the sign program is uh, being approved uh, by virtue of being part of the uh, project plans that the commission is looking at tonight? Yes. So if, if the commission approves the project, we would be approving the sign program in effect as, as part of that, correct? That is correct. OK, great. Thank you. Those are all the questions I have at this time. Are there other questions from commissioners? Steve. Uh, thank you very much. Just a couple of site questions. First of all, so they plan to plant lawn in the area that's green exhibited in the uh, site plan? Let's see. I'm going to pull up the map real quick so make sure we're talking thank about you. the same no, area. No problem. Yeah. Okay. So you're referring to this, uh, this area here in the center? Yeah, it says landscape area. Yeah. Okay, uh, yes, yeah, so the applicant uh, hasn't provided details of what specific uh, planting they're going to do that location, so we can certainly ask that question when, after their presentation. Okay, and then the other minor question I had is, as you, I visited the site, and as you turn into the proposed parking lot, there's no driveway, so you need to put in a driveway and move a tree over, but then there's the new uh, bike lanes with a hard curb in the middle of the road. So they're going to need to actually change that. And are they aware of that? It looks like it's a yes. major work out there. Yes, we we are we are aware of that. And the applicant team is aware that that's going to be a requirement that they're going to need to address. Okay, just want to make sure because anyway, <laughs> those are my only two questions. Thank you. Anyone else with questions? Okay, well then let's uh, move to the applicant presentation if the applicant is presenting.
Chair, I've just promoted uh, members of the applicant team. They should be coming onto the screen in moments. Good evening, commissioners. Can, can everybody hear and see me all right? Yes. You actually don't need to see me. It might be better if you didn't, <laughs> but I was just wondering. No, we can't avoid it. <laughs> I want to see, Kyle, do you have our package as well to present or is that uh, somebody else? Uh, I didn't receive any separate uh, presentation from your team, so I just have the project plans here, which I was. Uh... That's all. That's all I need. That's all I need. Um, so specifically, uh, maybe we we could start with just the bird's eye. That'd be that'd be sort of a great starting point. Commissioners, we're we're really excited to, to show you this project tonight. It's been sorry. Um, could you could you introduce yourself real quickly? We've got a public absolutely, project. absolutely, commissioners. Thank you, thank you. Um, again, we're excited. My name is Scott Martin. I'm a principal and, and architect with RRM Design Group. I've got the project architect, Kyle Murray, with me tonight, um, also from RRM. And then also the applicant, Paul Tompkins, is here with us for, for any specific questions related to that. So um, we, we're here. We can answer any questions as you have them. Uh, beyond that, we just, I, I already hear a couple questions being, being tossed around, and, and we'd love an opportunity to sort of tell you how we got here, um, where we're coming from, and, and what we think is going to be a really special project. So um, with that, um, I, I, we, we prepared this slide to actually show some, of, uh, as the commissioner was asking, show some of the compatibility challenges with, with this area. Um, you know, I will tell you, this is not the first time I've designed a project on this site. Um, it's by far the least intense I've ever designed. <laughs> um, but what it isn't is an empty parking lot that's sat there for a decade now almost. So um, I'm really excited about uh, what, what some people are calling a temporary use, even though these are all permanent structures. I think this is going to be such a great hit. It may never go away. Um, but there is a downtown vision plan. In fact, that's a good point. There's a downtown vision plan. There's um, a downtown core from a zoning standpoint, very Euclidean. Um, and then there's the, the greater downtown um, that is spoke about in the general plan and others. And, and this crosses some lines. It, at one point it is in the downtown and at one point it isn't depending on which planning document you're looking at. Um, for us, this is sort of the transitional zone of downtown heading up towards Upper Monterey um, and campus and, and other areas, um, but it, it is not in the core. Uh, just Santa Rosa Street de denotes that, and we are just outside of that. Um, as such, many sites just out of the core have struggled to develop, and I think that's part of the while the downtown vision plan really looks forward to this being a transit hub, looking at potentially a parking structure and other things here, um, the, the proper zoning incentives just aren't there yet to, to make a project of that size and scale happen. So what I think the applicant has done is come up with something very unique and, and, and very visionary here, which is a great current use, a great current project but the idea is still that one day, if the better project was feasible and allowable and the city aligned with the applicant and everything else, is that they could be unbolted and, and a new project could happen, just like, just like anyone, but a little easier to dismantle. Mm -hmm. um, we're excited, though, and we want to focus on this tonight. Um, this, like I said, right now is just an empty site. It's just, just a parking lot with one, uh, two old buildings on it. We're gonna de demolish one and save the one that you see in the, in the upper portion of, of your slide here. Um, you can see there's actually a building on the back side. There's a great little coffee place um, and it's got old roll up doors, one scale. Um, because of a little bit of grade change, we're actually almost directly in line with it, with, with the height of our project. So from a scale size, we're, we're, we're very appropriate. Um, for, for at least the uh, surrounding context, uh, directly adjacent sites, that is. Um, we, we are providing a little bit of parking, not what meets the requirements, but again, if I was a block away, my parking requirements would be zero. So this is really much more focused on a, a place where we see people 
having the opportunity to walk and bike, um, taking advantage of the existing transit that's already along Monterey Street and uh, established in downtown and really starting to become sort of a, a core and a focus for, for this side of town, a, a draw that, that may not offer exactly the, the bar scene and other scenes that you see downtown. I see this more as somewhere where I could take my wife and 10 year old and he can get an ice cream and we can sit down for dinner and, and ha have a really great gathering spot. Um, I'm really excited about that. There are some examples throughout the state where, where these uh, shipping container gardens have really taken off and be, become a, a wonderful site, a, a wonderful place. And that, that's what we envision this. It really capitalized on San Luis Obispo's climate and its outdoor space, the ability to provide that. So we're looking forward to those opportunities. All the public spaces outside of the containers, that can, um, except for the restrooms, the containers themselves are primary use, primarily used for either food service or food prep. Um, they are 100% permanent two code real buildings though. We wanna make sure that's stressed. We're not, we're not asking for a temporary building permit of any sort. These will all be 100% two code as well will the landscape. Kyle, if you could go down two or three slides to the um, site plan. Um, it was great. A commissioner already picked up on this, uh, the landscape area. You know, we are, we are um, dealing with some permeability. So while it is envisioned that that is not lawn, that it will be turf still allowing some water to infiltrate in. We are doing some new uh, tree work along the street where we've been talking to engineering and are aware of the conditions and, and uh, well abreast of that. Looking forward to working with uh, the public works director to make, make sure all of that works. We are providing mainly EV ready or EV capable parking spaces and an excess of bike parking because we really do think this is an opportunity, whether it's for, for a campus student on their way back up from downtown or a family to bike from the adjacent area, we, we really think that this is more than a, a drive to and sit. It is part of your downtown experience it, and, and we'd love to capitalize on that. So there is, there is um, you know, we're working with staff for a full landscape plan as we come in with permits, but uh, the concept there is, is to allow some permeability and some outdoor space. Kyle, if you just go to the color and material board, it was brought up and it was a discussion point at uh, ARC. Um, we went back and forth and I think we, we've done this. I think that this is going to, it, it's fun. It's eclectic. It's different than a lot of other brick storefronts that you will see in downtown San Luis Obispo. And I go back to saying, well, it's just outside of downtown. So, so maybe that's appropriate. And, and we, had a, we had a healthy dialogue with ARC. And in, in the end, they uh, concurred that we should approve the project based on these colors um, supplied. And, and they're contrived for, or they're, they're derived from um, true use of the building itself, a shipping container sort of motif with uh, colors found there. Um, that These are not overly ornate buildings and we think that's okay. We think the, the use and the activity and the physical people and the emphasis on outdoor space is really what's gonna be the draw, not an overly articulated building. So it's kind of taking some of the architecture that we've tried so hard for years and flipping it inside out and saying, come to our outdoor space and look at architecture. So we're, we're really excited about it. It is unique, it is different, but we think that that's what makes it so fun. Um, with that, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer any specific questions. Um, I hope I've at least addressed some of them along the way. And like I said, I've also got uh, Paul, uh, the applicant here, um, and my project architect, if, if you have any questions. So thank you so much for the opportunity. We're really looking forward to this. So commissioners, do we have questions of the applicant? Um, Steve, you had one originally. I don't, I don't have a question. Oh, at this point. So you understand they're working on the parking lot and- uh, Yeah, yeah. I guess I'll make one comment since, since, I, since I have the floor. Um, one thing I think that it will feel like um, is the creamery. I've been to the creamery several yeah. times recently, and I'll even know there are permanent building or not containers. 
It's got, I think it might have the same feel as that in the summer night, the creamery is really a, a nice place to hang out. Anyway, that was my only comment. Commissioner, that's a great comment. And that is one of our inspirations. We were hoping for a little, even more family friendly. That's part of the landscape concept there and a little more permeable, but absolutely. I think that that new building of the creamery is very similar. Ema? Um, yeah, yeah, I, uh, it's really an interesting design, and um, the the grill on top is basically to shield uh, H HVAC equipment. Correct. It's yeah, and, a, and some cooking ventilation. There there are some uh, containers available for cooking, much like you'd see on top of a food truck. Although because they are permanent buildings, we provided a screen. It has to let some air in. Again, this was a dialogue we had with ARC. We think we've met all the, the requirements for both the community-wide design guidelines and, and um, you know, what we're going to need for building code as well. And, and yeah, that, it, that looks good. It, it, it fits, I think, to have that. Um, you're also thinking about murals on the sides of these. I, is that what I'm reading in the drawings? That that was what that that was part of the concept. Either you know, I think I think one of the commissioners already alluded at it. And we're not going to hide from it. These are boxes, right? Um, and uh, at times that can be maybe a little harsh. So we we did allude to both murals and some some vegetation. You know, it's really an internalized project, and the vendors want to be able to 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 uh, service in interior to the project. Yeah. So. Um, the quote unquote backside that becomes a little bit more public interface. That's where we focus some of our signage for the project, landscape area, and, and even added some areas for vines to grow up the containers as well. And then the idea of a mural as well. I guess I have one more question, Mr. If, um, and I think this is more for Mr. Tompkins than uh, you, Scott, and that is, um, uh, you, you know, the, the, this activity is picking up on Monterey, and um, I do see lots of people coming by bikes and so on to the coffee shops that are sort of very close to this site. Uh, but I was just wondering, you indicate food services all around the court, but what happens if the, it doesn't work at this scale? What, what are your plans if, you know, you don't have food service providers, who would come in? Yeah, what I can primarily say to that is we've, we've begun our initial tenant negotiations. We haven't signed any leases, but our, our initial negotiations have been highly positive with local vendors. We've talked to over 15 so far who are just food vendors looking at the location. Uh, so I'm, I'm highly confident we will be able to lease up and operate it with food vendors. And then I believe we have potentially beer tasting and cider tasting and maybe wine tasting as well that we'll have on site. But it will be primarily a food location, but there will be beer, wine and kind of family friendly outdoor drinking to go along with the food. But we are confident so far they're leasing. I, I ask because, you know, this is a very specific kind of design. It's for... Mm -hmm. It's for retail food vending. And so uh, when, when just worries if it doesn't take off, you know, what you might want to be putting in there. So. Yeah, and we've, we've done what we can to make it as simple as possible to give vendors as much of a chance of success as possible. The common area will be maintained by shared third-party maintenance. So from their side, really be cooking and serving their food within their container to their customers outside. So it opens our pool of who can potentially operate to a significantly wider pool than a normal restaurant. And that could be even existing restaurants that have a specialty item that they'd like to serve at a higher rate. They can come in or someone who's a new restaurateur in the local area can start a restaurant like this much simpler, much more simple, excuse me, than a typical restaurant. So that's our idea. We, we did think about it and we did try to do what we could to open that pool as much as possible. So we have significant options of what could go there. Mm -hmm. I see. So startups could also be, it might be affordable for startup operations. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I actually, you know, portions of this, we have, we have to go through the leasing. It's a whole process, but portion of this could potentially serve as a small restaurant facing retail facing incubator within, within the area of downtown slow. Um, we have to look, and if you get a good fit, obviously you want that tenant there, but there's potential for new restaurants coming in there, proving their concept and going to a more permanent place elsewhere or maintaining both. It, but it is, it is exactly that. Thank you. Mm. I, I have no more questions. Are there others with questions? Uh, Emily. Hi, yeah. Um, am I understanding that the only access for people coming in is on Higuera Street, or is that also an access point on Toro? I can answer, Scott. Oh, so sorry. Is, I'm so, I think I was muted. I apologize. <laughs> no, there is not access on Toro. There, there is okay. primarily public access along Higuera Street. That is uh, just to help with some of the control. There is some service access and staff access off of the parking lot that you can see on that side. But that but, would only, I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to. The, again, it, emergency ex, exiting requirements and things like that through the, through the staff access, but primarily the entry to the project will be there along Hygera Street. So everybody will be funneled in um, who's coming just to, to visit the food vendors will come in through that Hygera entrance. Okay. Yes. And then um, will that be something that will be gated off um, when outside of, of set hours? Are you envisioning that this is more of an afternoon evening type of location or is it potentially something that could do earlier service? Um, I don't know how far you are into thinking about that. <laughs> there, are, there are some limitations for, for hours of use, but more, more than yeah. anything right now, it's envisioned currently as primarily afternoon and evening. If there was a coffee and bakery demand, maybe a morning use, but um, we're, you know, we're, we're also uh, monitoring our parking demand as well. Um, it, it, the idea is yes, absolutely, that you could close it off at night and keep okay. non-desired public out of there. Then visually, um, it looked like you have six foot fencing in some areas, but I couldn't quite tell if that's wrapping around the entire exterior or if that's- um, yeah, did the idea was to use the containers themselves as okay. a lot of the fence, as they're eight foot tall, um, that they would act primarily as the visual or physical barrier. And then just to sort of connect the dots or fill in the spaces in between, there would be that six foot fencing. <laughs> that you're using. Yep. And, and that six foot fencing in the front, is that designed to be somewhat transparent? It looked on your, um, your vision drawing that that was something that where people could kind of see what was happening Deep inside through. of there. 100%. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no one else, I'll uh, jump in and maybe. Uh, I did have a. Did oh, have good. A, oh, Mike, okay. sorry. And okay. you have your hand up right now. I'm sorry. I see it now. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> it looks like a yellow flower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the so, background. <laughs> so um, there is a, um, a community design guideline that. It talks to uh, about compatibility with surrounding buildings um, with regard to design and, and a number of factors. I was wondering if you could, um, uh, Mr. Martin, just try to convince me about how, how this uh, project is compatible with surrounding buildings with regard to the design theme, the uh, textures, and the materials. Because in looking at all the buildings around this, um, side, I, I'm having difficulty finding compatibility with those aspects of design. Sure, sure, Com Commissioner Wilkin. I think it's a, I think it's a great conversation to have, and I think it is yet another project that that starts to really question the subjectivity of compa compatibility and what that means. So when we had this discussion at ARC. We talked about um, the, the scale and the materials of the building right next door. As I said, right next door is a block building. One of our buildings is block. Um, that block building has roll-up door, roll-up metal and glass doors, very similar in a material compatibility from what we are looking at with, with the shipping containers. Um, and, and again, from a, from a sort of monochromatic sort of look at a building, 
I, I think these are a series of buildings. Each building is colored one color. Um, it is not dark gunmetal black. It is not brick red. It is something in between. And 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 I just want to I want to be very cautious here and uh, say this the right way, but I don't want to dilute the quality of San Luis Obispo architecture by trying to mimic everything we do have. I don't think compatibility means matching. I think compatibility means providing a use and a place that will work within a neighborhood. And I, and I think whether you look at the new Bank of America building, whether you look at the old Bank of America building, uh, the brownstones behind me, uh, Petra right next door, which has a wide variety of materials, colors, and uses. We, we actually do think that is the urban fabric that allows this kind of project to happen. Okay, and one, one additional question. Um, there is another community design guideline for the downtown that talks about finished materials. And maybe this is a question that's better for staff, but it, it says pretty clearly that uh, corrugated metal is, is considered inappropriate in downtown. Um, and this is corrugated, well, it says corrugated sheet metal, this is corrugated metal. Do you have a, a response to that or maybe staff? I don't, maybe it's for staff. Uh, yes, uh, so that section, which is chapter four of the design guidelines is referring to the downtown. Um, uh, as um, uh, Scott Martin had mentioned earlier, there are several different boundaries of downtown. And so uh, we typically applied chapter four to the CD zone within the downtown core. Um, so this was identified as a discussion point in the ARC staff reports regarding materials and neighborhood compatibility. And so we were looking for guidance from the ARC if there was concerns related to neighborhood compatibility or the materials. And so uh, they did not identify any concerns uh, um, and they did recommend approval of the projects. So uh, in the conversation of the applicability of our, uh, chapter four of the community design guidelines, they agreed with staff's uh, assessment of the applicability. Okay, well, so um... You're saying that the staff is interpreting the community design guidelines, uh, downtown guidelines to mean the the CD zone. Is is that what you said? Okay. Yes. So, but when I look when I look at the um, land use element, there's a map. In the land use element, it's a figure. I forget what figure it is for. Figure four, I think, in the land use element, mm -hmm. and it shows this area as part of the downtown planning area and downtown core. I think it used the word downtown core. So, so it's kind of, uh, I guess you can pick what you want, but so staff is, is not applying the downtown design guidelines to this area then. Correct. Um, I, I worked on the neighboring project, which is the Bank of America redevelopment. And then uh, Rachel Cohen also worked on the neighboring project to that. And this was consistent with those reviews as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's that's all my questions, uh, Chair Jorgensen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, let me. Uh, I want to kind of get back to um, um, some of the concerns that and questions that Emily had raised um, because I'd had some similar uh, concerns. It, in a, in a way, I think it is about the kind of um, management of the. Uh, facility. And so maybe for Mr. Tompkins, I'd, I'd ask, um, um, you're going to have a, I, I think I heard you say you have a third party um, we, maintaining we, the, I assume the restrooms, the grounds, um, any gates that need to be locked or anything like that, or will there be somebody present all the time? Yeah, there will be a third party uh, either one, two employees, depending on the time of day at all times of operations, as well as doing opening and closing of the common area. I see. Sounds like a good idea. And um, speaking of the um, of the uh, fencing and the uh, views in and, and for that matter, the access, I think one of the things that's really exciting about this project is it uh, has the potential, I think, to kind of um, thicken, if you will, the 
walk from Cal Poly to downtown and vice versa. And so making the only access um, at the corner of at the corner of Toro and Higuera uh, makes that a little harder. Um, and yet it sounds like from a management point of view, you want to have everyone come in in one entrance that uh, can be, I suppose, controlled would be the word. Is that, am I right about that? Correct from the management standpoint, we're also hoping for the grand entrance of walking into kind of a new area when you walk in there. But the primary reason is down Toro, there's a retaining wall that would create entrance on that side, really just make it impractical. On, on, on the whole Toro side? Yeah, it starts right at the corner and just works its way down. Yeah, yeah. So uh, back to your response to Emily, uh, there'll, be, uh, there'll be visual cues and, and uh, some transparency to allow people at least to see there's something in there. They just have to walk further to go see it. Okay, uh, that sounds good. Good, Th those were my questions. So uh, with that, not seeing any more questions, let's move to, the, to any public comment we have. Uh, Kevin, do we have any uh, public comment on this item? I should also say uh, I've seen at least six letters from um, the public uh, today speaking on this item. Chair, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, walk through or talk through the uh, instructions. Uh, for anybody that's in the attendee audience, if you would like to speak on this item, this is your chance now. Uh, you just need to raise your hand. I will recognize you and promote you to a panelist where you can turn on your audio and video and share your comments with uh, the commission. And we'll give you another few seconds to do so. And chair, just to note, I double checked and there is no additional emails that have come in during the meeting. Uh, this is a reference to the emails you received earlier. And there you go, back to you. Nobody in the attendee list has raised their hand. Okay, well then I'll bring it back to the commission uh, for deliberation. Somebody wanna jump in? Nima. Yeah, I would, you know, um, over the years, we've kept trying to have Monterey be um, an extension of the three-story, more dense downtown. Uh, I mean, that was always on the agenda and we would pay, push uh, people with projects. I remember particularly um, when we had the corner of Santa Rosa in Monterey and uh, the building initially came in much higher and we wanted more and it just, none of it seemed to work from a development po point of view. And I mean, I fully respect uh, the calculations that the development community puts into these things. So over the years, I'm sort of um, getting perhaps uh, resigned is the wrong word, but just accepting of the fact that market conditions don't seem to warrant um, more dense, more dense, higher development up Monterey for, for right now. Um, and I guess uh, staff has said this is permanent, uh, but I'm kind of comforted by the fact that it is containers because, you know, there are cases in Europe, for instance, where something can be like this, can be used for like 10, 15, sometimes 20 years, and then situation changes and those containers move to another site. Uh, oftentimes it's for affordable housing or you know particular needs uh, housing, but the containers really can shift somewhere. So I, although I'm a little concerned about this, I really like the design. Uh, I think there's a buzz on that part of the street with young folks. Um, I've been at the coffee shops opposite and they are really hopping. There's lots of people there. So they, see, they seem to be filling the need. And so I'm, I support this project, uh, even though the sort of the, the long range planning side of me is concerned that 
we're not getting the growth of the downtown that we were hoping for. And the, the kind of downtown that we were hoping for. Because we were envisioning small units on top of commercial on the ground and so on up Monterey to create some sort of uh, alternative housing type. So I, I'm just, I guess I'm just making a statement rather than uh, voicing objections, but sort of reflecting on the fact that I support this because I don't think other projects which we thought we would like to see happen have been successfully brought forth and approved. Amy, would you like to uh, move the, uh, the motion to uh, get this get this started? Yeah, I think I would. I'd like to move the motion to approve this project as with the um, not amendments, but conditions as articulated by staff. So while we're at it, is there a second? Just for purposes of discussion. I'll, I'll second it. Steve Kahn will second it. Steve Mr. Kahn seconds. Okay. And Steve, did you want to say anything about it right now? We all want to say something, I imagine. No, I I I like the project. I think it's a good transition, like what you said. And um, I think it's a neat project. When I visited the site, that I think it used to be a car lot, that center building they're going to demo, a two-story building with the windows looking down. That's a pretty neat building, but I really can't see any way it can be tied in with the project. Um, it doesn't fit, but it is kind of a neat old, it's the total car lot building, but anyway. So I, I second it and I totally support the project. Thank you. Others um, have comments or concerns, questions? Michael, Mike, sorry. I see that flower again. <laughs> You're, you're muted. I'm here. You're muted. Sorry about that. Um, I think the proposed restaurants and the uh, gathering area are definitely consistent with general plan policies and the land use element. I think they would be a good addition to the neighborhood and contribute to the walkability of the area. I also recognize that the, the reuse of shipping containers is, is it's a creative design. And um, um, I'm not totally convinced about the, uh, the consistency with all the design guidelines, but um, um, I'm a little concerned there. Um, uh, but I'm a little bit comforted at the same time that maybe this won't be a temporary use and that the, uh, that the containers can be um, unbolted and, and used for another purpose at some point. So uh, maybe the fact that it might not be you know, permanent uh, uh, helps, but uh, all in all, um, I'm going to vote in favor of it, even with uh, some reservations about the uh, meeting the uh, design guidelines. Uh, not that I don't think it's a it's kind of a cool design. It's, it's creative, uh, and uh, the colors are. I'm fine with the colors. It's just uh, just looking at the design guidelines. I'm having a little bit of trouble, but. So I'm not totally convinced, but I'm going to vote for it anyway. Thank you. Emily? Anything? Yeah, um, having spent some time at the site this week, I was really hoping that there would be a way to integrate more access points just because it does feel kind of somewhat removed from the corridors that a lot of you know, folks would be coming from. Um, the one entrance point that's there and just to create a sense of flow and, and community to have people coming in from different sides. But, but I understand the practicalities of that. Um, on a personal level, I'm excited for the project. I think it's really neat. I've been to projects like this before and they become really awesome neighborhood hubs. Um, but yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think I'd like to add that um, to me, this is kind of a uh, I don't know if you'd call it a proof of concept project, but it, um, I, I think we're all trying to demonstrate the viability of the North Monterey area. And um, part of that is, uh, can we draw people to it? And, and can we draw families and students as well? Uh, and I think that doesn't automatically all of a sudden mean, gee, everybody's going to want to build, but it does. Uh, allow us to understand if this is an attractive area to people, that means people are going to want to live there as well in that in this general area. So 
uh, this seems like a very smart step um, to um, test out these these matters and try to figure out exactly uh, following along the lines that Hema raised in terms of the history and how hard it has been to get the kind of development we've imagined just should fit there. It's in the plans. Well, where is it? Come on. Uh, the reality is we've got to see people uh, using these spaces, I think. And I think this is a great way to start. So given that bigger purpose, from my point of view, I um, can understand the concerns, for instance, that Mike Wilkin has raised around uh, total consistency. But uh, I think there's a bigger purpose here. And I, I, I think it's really worth a try on our part to uh, find a way to help this succeed. So that's my two bits. Uh, any other comments? I'll give you be sure somebody ought to be out there rebutting me for one thing. <laughs> but if not, I think we're ready to vote. Uh, I don't see any hands raised. Uh, Kevin, would you call a roll on this motion? Commissioner Dondekar. Yes. Commissioner Kahn. Yes. Commissioner Francis. Yes. Commissioner Wilkin. Yes. Chair Jorgensen. Yes. Motion passes with uh, Commissioner Hopkins recused and Vice Chair Quincy absent. Thank you very much. And thank you, uh, applicants and presenters. Appreciate that. That was very helpful. So um, we finished that and we're ready to, uh, to move on to um, staff re updates and agenda forecast. Right. Well, thanks, Chair Jorgensen. I think I'm going to turn this over to Kevin for a quick update on uh, virtual meetings and when we're going to come back in person. So, Kevin, I'll, I'll send it over to you. Okay, sure. Thank you. Um, so I, I was asked to just kind of give a rundown of the, the current state of things because, you know, with COVID, everything is kind of a moving target, right? Um, as you may know, council, uh, let me turn on my video so you're not looking at black screen. Um, council is going back to in-person meetings starting with their March 15th uh, meeting. And so they've essentially, you know, put, in, put their stamp of approval on the advisory bodies going back to in-person um, following that. So uh, technically, you would be able to go back to in person for your uh, scheduled second meeting during March. Um, but the direction that we've gotten here in administration is that, you know, it's, it's not a, that's not the hard fast you must do it. Um, that is really pushed to, being pushed till April. And we've had a request um, for staffing purposes that we go ahead and recommend that the planning commission not go back to in person until the April meetings. Um, and um, then once we go back to in person, you know, we're going to be watching the the COVID rates the whole time. This is all based on the projections that the the trend continues down and that it is in fact, you know, uh, hospitalization rates are, are down and um, um, any, any in-person meetings, you know, we're gonna follow the, the governor's uh, continued guidance on unvaccinated individuals attending indoor uh, gatherings are going to be asked to mask. Um, and of course, anybody who then is vaccinated can make a choice to mask, including the commissioners. And since you're going to be, uh, you know, essentially required to come to a public meeting in person, um, the city will provide at your request um, KN95s or N95 masks if you would, if you desire them. Um, and then um, there's been questions and discussion about hybrid meetings. And this is uh, a hybrid meeting is, you know, uh, doing in person plus what we're doing now. And while we have, um, we're not going to go to those immediately. Um, it's, you know, reading the tea leaves, it's probably something that, that, you know, the state may even mandate for, you know, put into law that is something that is required in the future because it does allow access for more of the community. Um, we 
have um, an approved budget, but there is there is some you know some technical hurdles, some equipment to purchase to be able to allow us to conduct hybrid meetings. So we won't be going to those immediately. Um, the general timeline is by June summer. Um, we just don't have a specific time a timeline. And then um, the last thing I just wanted to comment on is that, you know, the governor at any time, you know, we don't know, could lift the state of emergency. If, if and when the governor lifts the state of emergency, then we are absolutely going to be going to in-person meetings because uh, the type of meeting we have are having right now is only allowed under the state of emergency. Um, and, and so, of course, we would go back to in-person Brown Act meeting rules. Um, and there you go. That's kind of what I have. If you have any questions, let me know. And maybe Tyler can jump in if he's got more comments he'd like to share. I don't think I have any extra comments. I think that was a good overview. Um, but I'd be happy to hear the commissioners have any comments about that. Yeah. Jump in, commissioners. If you don't have anything to say, I'm just going to take that as I did a fantastic job of giving you a summary and you have no questions. You did do that, that's for sure. <laughs> and it could change at any moment. Yeah. I mean, um, like other advisory bodies, I think we've become about as resilient as we can uh, be. And um, I just imagine that'll continue. So somehow I suspect this won't be the last word. Uh, given how much things have gone back and forth and we just make it work. I've gotten, um, I'm certainly ready to leave Zoom, but it is nice having the whole, uh, the whole um, agenda up on the screen in front of me. And I just, um, these days I've given away my small laptops to kids and grandkids and I'm not sitting with an easy way to, bring up the whole um, agenda, especially when it's a long agenda um, uh, in front of me in, in person. So I've got to kind of decide whether I've got to go, want to go back to printing and all that, that that encompasses or not. We'll just kind of see how it plays out, I guess. Or I'll just memorize the agenda, read it very <laughs> cite chapter and verse and wow everybody before I fall asleep. Uh, from spending so much time on it. Uh, any comments on any part of this? Um, or do or is there any concern about um, starting in April? Um, I don't have any comment on what was discussed. <clears throat> I certainly look forward to getting back together in person meetings. Um, all I have to say is the next meeting in uh, March, I will not be here at that meeting. I'll be out of the country. So I'll be, I'll be absent the next meeting. Well, good news. There is going to be no next meeting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're going with you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Let's go. Yeah, the, the, so I can move on, I guess, at this yeah. point, I guess, to the kind of forecast for March. So uh, the March 9th meeting, we don't have any items that are ready for Planning Commission. So that meeting is canceled. And so the next regular meeting will be March 23rd. That one does have several uh, items on it. It has that residential care facility at 55 Broad that I've talked about um, last couple of meetings. It also has a new commercial building off of Impresa, 3490 Impresa. It's about 16, 17,000 square foot building there coming to you from a recommendation from the ARC. And then lastly, we have the general plan annual report. So this is a presentation from staff that provides kind of an overview of our um, you know, policies, general plan policy implementation, um, things that are happening on the development spectrum, public safety, public works, utilities, it kind of covers all the main uh, departments. So we will be doing planning on some time for a presentation and some kind of question and answer time for that item as well. And then moving out as uh, we discussed, so I think the plan right now would be 
the uh, first meeting in April, which is the 13th, would be when we would um, plan to be back in the chambers. April 13th, okay. So let me know if you have any questions about that. I, um, I anticipate we will have a meeting on the 13th, but um, I will update you on the 23rd on kind of status of how that, how that works. Any questions? Well, uh, then I think um, we now know that the regular next regular meeting of the Planning Commission will be March 23rd. The March 9th meeting will be canceled. Um, we're adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Hi. Thank you, everybody. Good to see you. Right for rain. Have a good night. <laughs> Miracle March. Yeah, there we go. We need it. Take care. <laughs>